Welcome to the West Coast Conference Game of the Week. It is presented by Geico. Our game today, the St. Mary's Gales come calling on the hometown Pepperdine Waves. Here are the West Coast Conference standings as of the moment. A very familiar look at the top of the conference. St. Mary's and Gonzaga, the only two unbeatens. BYU, two up and one down. USF at three and two. And there are the Pepperdine Waves, two up, two down. A pivotal game for them today. And hello again, everybody. Barry Tompkins once more with my partner, Casey Jacobson. Interesting game here today, I think, Casey. Last week you were saying, pump the brakes a little bit on the St. Mary's Gales. Yeah, they're good, but it's been all home cooking. Today they're on the road. Very pivotal game for both teams. Yeah, huge game for both teams. And I would actually say that it's bigger for Pepperdine. Why? Because guys like me and everybody else thought Pepperdine would actually finish above St. Mary's. And if that's the case, they have to win. It's a must win here in the Firestone Fieldhouse. All right, let's take a look at the schedule in the West Coast Conference on this basketball Saturday. Pacific will be at LMU just up the road. You'll be able to watch that game on most of these stations right after we get out of Dodge. Portland has to visit Gonzaga. That is not an easy task. USF goes to Provo to play BYU in Santa Clara against San Diego. I'm intrigued by that USF-BYU game, Casey, because this seems to me to be two teams in search of themselves. Yeah, USF is a little bit up and a little bit down, and BYU, we all know, is a dangerous team. Dave Rose has those guys ready to play, but they need some more consistency. They're still trying to search. Can Nick Emery and Chase Fisher kind of calm themselves down, take good shots, and Kyle Davis on the inside, can we get him some touches? If they can do that, they're a dangerous team. Let's talk a little bit about the hometown waves. Marty Wilson's had a tough time with injuries. Guys have been dropping like flies. But right now, they seem to have things headed in the right direction. I've been really impressed with Marty Wilson, and I got a chance to talk to him today. And what I wanted to ask him was, they've played 11 non-conference games and now four WCC conference games. And I wanted to know from him, what does he like most about his team? And here's what he had to say. Well, I think our team is gelling. Um, they're starting to figure out how to play better with each other. Um, we've been injury. Uh, we've been injured quite a bit. Uh, we've tried to calculate how many days we've been without our full team, and uh, there's a lot. And that's been the challenge for us, but our team chemistry is, is great. Um, our guys really enjoy playing with each other. Uh, we talk about play for one another, and they do a great job of that. Um, and then I think I like our, our, our defense a lot better now that we've gotten, especially gotten back home and had some time to practice and do some, some more things. So you mentioned home court. You guys have not lost here at Firestone Fieldhouse, but you're going to get a huge test today. St. Mary's Gales coming in probably as hot as any team in the country. What problems do they pose and how do you slow them down this afternoon? Well, first of all, uh, I take my hats off to, uh, to Randy Bennett. He's done a heck of a job with their program and we look towards them and obviously towards uh, Gonzaga in, to in, in terms of building our program. Um, the, the main thing is us defending ball screens. Uh, we've had trouble in our early league games of, of defending them and reading them, and I think they're as good as anybody in the league of using them and their guards and making good decisions. So we have to do a good job of containing their, their guards and, and not allowing them easy three points off the, uh, off the ball screen. And I want to ask you, like, one of my favorite things as a broadcaster is to watch a young player grow and improve each year. And I want to ask you about Lamar Murray Jr. And you already mentioned the injuries that you guys have sustained as a team. How important, how impressive you've been with his improvement, and how important is he going forward, his consistent play? Well, the, the number one thing with Lamar, he's allowing us to coach him. Um, we've challenged him to listen, uh, to, to, to be coachable, and when he does that, he's going he's gonna to get on the court. When he defends, he's going to stay on the court. When he defends and stays on the court, he's going to rebound, and we know he can score. Um, so he's allowed us to coach him. Uh, he's allowed us to, to help him develop and, and work on the weaknesses, and now it's, it's showing all those things are coming together. Yeah, it really is. So, Coach, I first met you when I was a sophomore in high school. You were on Brad, Hall, uh, Brad Holland's staff at University of San Diego coaching my older brother Brock. And what I remembered most about you was you were the fun, energetic assistant coach back then. I could tell that you loved the game. How, are you still having fun, Coach, now that you're here at Pepperdine for a few years and now you're a head coach? Are you still loving the game like you did back then? I, I still love it. Um, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't I wouldn't be in it. Uh, I'm still energetic. Uh, I have to be more of the enforcer at, uh, at times. Uh, so that's that's the, the, the difference of, of being a head coach, being an assistant. Uh, all the guys love you as an assistant. Uh, but as a head coach, you have to make those decisions of, yes, you can't play. No, you can't play. Yes, you can take that shot. No, you can't. Um, but but I have great relationships with our guys. And 
those guys understand that. Uh, Coach, I've been very impressed with your your uh, improvement over the years, and uh, I wish you good luck going forward for the rest of the season. Right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Casey Jacobson with Coach Marty Wilson. Pepperdine and St. Mary's, our game of the week. Plenty more to talk about in the West Coast Conference this week. Kelly Tennant and Dave Miller ignoring one another now, but they won't on the other side of this commercial break. Welcome back to WCC This Week, presented by GEICO in Los Angeles. I'm Kelly Tennant, alongside the coach, Dave Miller. Hey, coach. Hey. All right, let's get to the conference highlights from earlier this week. We start you off with St. Mary's and Loyola Marymount. It's Seal on the stands enjoying the game. First half, good ball movement by St. Mary's. Emmett Nahr knocks down the three. St. Mary's up big early. Second half, Gills up 14. Jock Landau gets the ball down low and throws down the dunk. St. Mary's up 16. Later on, Kyle Clark pump fakes, knocks down the three-pointer. St. Mary's went nine for 23 from the three, and St. Mary's wins 73 to 48. So St. Mary's remains undefeated in WCC play. A very nice start. What has impressed you so far about the Gales early this season? Well, KT, they're the best shooting team in all of college basketball. Number one, they shoot 53.9% from the field, and they don't turn the basketball over. The open man gets the ball, and they can all shoot. It's really simple. They space it, they move it, they shoot share it and then defensively they only allow 57 points per game that's second in all of division one basketball so they're extremely efficient and they defend that's why they're playing so well yeah they're getting a lot of respect around this league all right we take you to the next highlight it's BYU and Santa Clara Santa Clara in Provo Jared Brownridge averaging over 20 a game so far but this game all about Collinsworth he grabs the offensive rebound misses the layup gets the board Again, this time blocked, but finally gets it to go. Coogs up early. Did you say relentless? <laughs> now up 15. Ball is loose. Goes right to Collinsworth with an easy two the other way. BYU now up 17. It's the final seconds of the half. It's Collinsworth picking up the assist off the inbound, inbounds pass. One of his 10 assists to go along with 11 rebounds. In the second half, he will finish with the left. 21 points on the night. Did he give you this B roll? Oh, Did man. You cut it? Another <laughs> triple double. Next possession off the Brownridge. Miss. Cougs in transition. Collinsworth goes ahead and kicks it out to Nick Emery. One of five threes. BYU goes on to win easily. 97 61. Collinsworth extends his own NC2A record with his ninth career double double. Pretty impressive. I'd say he's a very important part of this team. He really is. I call him a jack of all trades because he impacts the game. We talk about all the triple doubles. He does so many things well that when he's playing well, this team plays well. I mean, it's obvious that he can push it from coast to coast. He can score inside. He's relentless on the glass. Plus, he makes other guys better on the floor. Yeah, nice triple double. I don't know how he does that. That was that was really good. All right. So we take you to our next highlight. It is USF and San Diego. Torero is still looking for that first conference win. First half San Diego down seven. Gito Coke cut into the rim. Nice pass leads to a dunk. Two of his 15. But the big story was the Don's three point shooting. Ronnie, Bra Ronnie Boyce the third from well beyond the arc. Don's up 11. And then later in the second half. Boyce again coming off the screen. He finished with a career high 22 points. You think there's a reason he's number three? Uh, possibly. Moments later, Don's force the turnover. This time, Boyce finishes at the rim. San Francisco wins on the road 73 to 65. We take you to Malibu. Amon Murray Jr. and Pepperdine looking for their second straight win. Murray had some celebrity family in the building. Drake was there doing his famous hotline bling dance. Murray gets the ball in the lane, pulls up, and hits the floater. He started from the bottom. More from Murray. Here he drives, spins, lays it in, 
gets the foul. He's got a lot of enemies, coach. What a Manhattan Beach's finest. Once again, Murray. He gets open in the corner, drains the 17-footer. Murray really showing off his versatility. That's the motto. Pacific not going down without a fight. TJ Wallace brings the ball up, drives and gets it to go. Pacific down 60-57. Jet Reigns will find Davis. Davis with a strong move in the paint, turns and lays it in. Lead would change a lot. Wallace again at the top of the key. This time pulls up, hits the 15-footer. Pacific up 73-72, but final seconds of the game. Taylor pass to Cobra, knocked out of bounds. Pepperdine holds on to win it, 81-76. to so uh, some fans in Malibu all getting shots of Drake at the game. Megan Henley tweeting to welcome to Pepperdine to Drake. Nice win for the waves in front of Drake. And afterwards, this is the best, he broke it down with the team in the locker room. Man, I don't know the tradition. <laughs> Whatever you want on three. Man, I'm just gonna let you know, man. It's an honor to watch you boys play, man. I definitely gotta come back Saturday. So we get, we're at home Saturday. Yeah. 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 Love. One, two, three. Oh. He committed to being at the game of the week today. I like it. Oh, no. Here we go. You know, just you know, a new you career can, highlight you, you, for uh, me right now. You can, you, can, you can call me on my cell phone. <laughs> and uh, you know what? If Drake really loves the WCC and can dab, he needs to come in here to the studio. How cool is it going to be that he is going to be at that Pepperdine game? Seriously, I think that all the fans, all the players were all really excited. So hopefully he is at the game today. I like it. Oh, no. Let's, can, can we continue on with the show? Let's look at the standings because that's a, a little more normal than this. St. Mary's on top of the conference with a 14-1 record and a perfect 5-0 in conference play, followed by Gonzaga, who are also undefeated in the conference at 4-0. BYU sits third in the conference standings after their big win against Santa Clara. Okay, it's time for our newest segment on WCC this week. We like to call player versus coach. Randy Bennett has been a stable for the Gales in his 14 years as head coach, so he's seen quite a few players come through those doors. But <laughs> the question is, how well does he actually know them? Coach Dave Miller and Chris McGee put him to the test against one of his players, Dane Pinot. Take a look. All right, Randy, don't say the answer. Give him time to write it down. What you is Dane's favorite TV show? Favorite TV show? ESPN Sports Center. <laughs> Reveal it. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. 0 for 1. Okay, you're right. Uh, second question, Tough Randy. Coach, what is the drill that Dane hates most at your practices? Ooh. <laughs> He's thinking oh, right now. I'll give you a fine hey, down. Three on three, full court. Okay, let's <laughs> see what he wrote. Yes! Three on three, three on four. three. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, last question. We'll do that more now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Dane's favorite musical group? Ooh. Oh, geez, I don't have one. Uh, it would be some Australian group. <laughs> some Australian group. I, yeah. I don't think one. I have that CD. The Wiggles? <laughs> <laughs> the Wiggles. <laughs> What's your answer, Dane? Uh, AC. AC. <laughs> That's an impressive answer. Thank you. All right, give that marker and... Uh, I hope I get AC. <laughs> AC, that's never that, a locker been... room. <laughs> what is coaches? Favorite non-basketball activity? I'm not sure. I, I reckon probably going to stadium pub and watching Delhi play on the TV. Uh, that's a good one. That's good. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I got football that. coaching is two kids. Yeah, man, I, I should have got, got that. that one. You should have like talked about it. We might have more than you guys. We rescheduled. <laughs> we rescheduled practice so he could coach flag football. <laughs> hey, <laughs> coaches have to have their priorities. Oh, that is so great. Where did your coach go to college? He's roommate with Tim Rapp. I know that, but I don't know which college. Where'd Rapp go? Yeah, that's the same question. I don't know. <laughs> I don't coach, know. give him the answer. Where did I used to live? San Diego. And UCSD. Boom! Oh. There you go. Yeah. Oh. What's Coach's most common catchphrase, favorite saying that he always says in practice? I'm not giving you any more hints. It's a tough. One. Time for your answer. Uh, dare to be great. Dare to be great. Do your job. Do your job. I didn't get it. Coach Bennett wins. And you yes. know what? You guys are not in the running yes. for player coach combined total because you didn't get any, Dane. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Tough all right. <laughs> you know what? We love St. Mary's Hoops. Great job, guys. They need to spend some more time bonding. Uh, 
love Randy Bennett and what he's been able to do. What kind of job has he done for that program? Well, it's funny you would ask that because it was his answer. He's doing his job. He's coaching. Think of this, Kelly. All five starters are gone. He loses 80% of his points, 80% of his rebounding, and he's undefeated. Right now, Randy Bennett, in my opinion, is on my national coach of the year list. You know, it's easy when you're at a big school and you've got McDonald's All-Americans, but what he's able to do is recruit in the USA, but he's got a pipeline to Australia. He's got six or seven guys that have played on the Australian national team, and to take them from way down under and bring him to Morago. That's the pipeline that he has. And with his coaching and being able to get guys to buy in and be on the same page, that's what makes him a candidate for my national coach of the year. I like it. That's good. He is good. That's for sure. All right, coach. Coming up on WCC this week, we'll have the story of St. Mary's junior transfer Joe Rahan and how he's taking advantage of his time with the Gales. Time for our WCC Player of the Week. It's Jared Brownridge from Santa Clara University. Brownridge's 23 points helped lift the Broncos past Portland last weekend, which snapped a four-game skid. Brownridge is averaging 20.2 points a game, which is second best in the conference. Joe Rahan has been a nice story for the St. Mary's Gales. After transferring from Boston College, he sat out last season and has become an immediate contributor for the 14-1 St. Mary's Gales. But this wasn't his first opportunity to play in Moraga. Here's Ezra Broder with the story of a player taking advantage of a second opportunity. He didn't take the most direct route there, but Joe Rahan ended up in Moraga after all. It was uh, a lot easier recruiting the second time than the first time. The California native almost came to St. Mary's as a freshman, but ultimately chose to play basketball at Boston College. Academics was a big part of it too, which was why I kind of came down to St. Mary's and Boston College being two great academic institutions. And um, the lore of the ACC and kind of getting away from home almost probably played a little secret factor in it. We recruited Joe out of high school. We recruited him hard. He's, he's the kid, he's the guy at that position that we wanted to uh, sign. And for good reason. Rayhan averaged almost 10 points per game and led the Eagles in assists in each of his two seasons there. But after BC made a coaching change, he knew it was time for a change himself. In the back of my mind, I always hoped when I was thinking, should I transfer, should I not transfer? I was thinking, man, I would really like to go play for Coach Brown St. Mary's if um, I'm lucky enough to get a call from him. There wasn't a lot of recruiting involved the second time. It was, hey, is this, is this what you want to do? And if so, then, then it can happen. And it did happen. Rayhan sat out last season because of NCAA rules, and though he didn't see any game action, he made an immediate impact. 
He was kind of leader of the team last year as a redshirt, and that's hard to do because you're not in there on the, in the games, and you're not, you can't compete with them in the games. But he uh, he brought it in practice, like he was playing. I usually played against him in practice last year, and I mean he's a great competitor. I much prefer having him on my team than playing against him. Rayhan's presence can be felt outside of the walls of McEwen Pavilion as well. Well, he is a bit of a nerd, yeah. He's, uh, he hits the books hard, but I mean, it's pretty impressive, yeah, the way he can balance his, uh, his studies and his, his basketball. I take a lot of pride in it, and I, I like it. I enjoy getting work done and going to the library and studying and that kind of thing. It's, it's fun for me. It's kind of like a challenge, and I, I like it. The economics major is a two-time All-ACC Academic Team honoree and made the WCC Commissioner's Honor Roll last season. I've always just been a very competitive kid, and I just never wanted to get a B. I never growing up. It was just like, oh, I want to get an A. I want to be in the top of the class. It's just kind of how I was wired um, academically and on the court. It didn't really matter. He can handle his academics and training for basketball and be the leader of the program. It helps when you're a good student on that. You can juggle all those balls, and we knew that with him. It's paying off for the Gales on the floor. They lead the country in field goal percentage, and Rayhan ranks in the top 10 in assists per game and assist to turnover ratio. Having a guy like Joe who's a great passer, it just makes my life a lot easier. I sort of get open shots and it makes the team's life a lot easier. The thing that attracted us the most about Joe was his leadership. He's a born leader. He's a great leader. It's a really tight community here in Moraga and the basketball team is kind of a central part of that and it's really awesome to be a part of. For the WCC this week, I'm Ezra Broder. Great work, Ezra. Let's take a look at the slate of WCC games today. It starts with our game of the week where you can catch Joe Rahan and the Gales take on Pepperdine in Malibu. The Zags taking on Portland at 5 o'clock. The Cougars taking on the Dons at 6. So, Coach, I ask you, what are you looking for in our Game of the Week matchup? Well, St. Mary's makes 10 threes a game, so Pepperdine has got to locate, stay attached to the shooters. It's going to be key that they make this a game of tough twos, contested twos, and then Pepperdine's got to get to the charity stripe. If they can do that, they'll hold serve at home. It should be a fun one in Malibu. Make sure you tweet me if you find Drake again. That's it for me and Coach. We'll get you back to Firestone Fieldhouse right after the break. We welcome you back to the West Coast Conference this week. St. Mary's and Pepperdine is our game of the week. Hi again, everybody. Barry Tompkins, Casey Jacobson alongside Casey. It's a good time for us to talk about the X factors in this game. Yeah, we got a matchup in the backcourt that's going to be very interesting tonight. We're going to start with Pepperdine and Jeremy Major, the 5'11 junior from Pasadena. He's the emotional leader for this team on both ends of the court. He's averaging nine points and three and a half assists per game. But since WCC play has started, he's really increased his scoring to over 15 a game. But today's challenge, he's going to going up against uh, on the defensive end of the side. St. Mary's, they got two point guards, Emmett Nahr, and my other X Factor, Joe Rahan. Joe is having a great junior season. He's originally from San Diego, but he transferred to St. Mary's via Boston College, and he's been everything head coach Randy Bennett has hoped for and more. He leads this team in assists, but more importantly, 
He rarely turns the ball over, and he's just a real tough kid. And he and MNR together form an unguardable tandem, especially in pick and roll. Yeah, I think they really set a tone for St. Mary's. This is a very good basketball team that will get tested today. Let's take a look at the schedule once again in the West Coast Conference on this Saturday and uh, kind of a mixed bag here. Pacific will be at LMU. Portland has to go to Gonzaga to play a tough place, of course. USF and BYU, we talked about it earlier, kind of a pivotal game. And Santa Clara will be just up the road at San Diego. So that's the way the West Coast Conference schedule sets up this week. Our game of the week right here, St. Mary's and Pepperdine. Pepperdine trying to get itself headed in the right direction. St. Mary's already seemingly headed that way, but needs a big win on the road. That would account for today's West Coast Conference Game of the Week. Don't go away.